Hi, I'm Jono, and if you're new here, I do pencil drawings. So recently I asked a bunch of people in my Patreon community to submit some artworks for a critique, and one of those critiques I thought had some broadly applicable points. So I thought I'd share some of those with you guys. If you're interested in uploading your own work, you can head over to Patreon and join the community. So the first submission I'd like to look at is Kyle. Kyle, you submitted two attempts. It's a pretty cool format, so I'm glad you did this. It'll allow me to see some of the progression and then give you some tips on, on how to improve. Um, so cool, let's open up the first one. So this looks to me like it was rushed, which it might have been, and that's not a problem at all. What I see here is that you applied some graphite first, then you used a blending stump over that, and I think that's really good. That's often how I do it. The advice that I think I can give you here is actually more on the emotional side, and that would be to, to slow down. I think enjoy the process slowly and um, take time. So when you're making these marks going across like this, you know, rather do small little circles or something and you can kind of blend those in a little bit. Obviously this is a, a tablet so it's not going to be the same, but um, I would just use drawing as a cathartic thing. There is a, a cathartic aspect to drawing. Slowing down has always helped me every time. I always can feel myself rushing when there's stress in life or deadlines or anything like that. and. It shows in your work very clearly. It's a very reflective medium and it's a very honest one, so it's going to give back the headspace that you're in when you're producing the work. So that's quite a long-winded <laughs> explanation there. But yeah, so I'd want you to slow down here. Your pencil lines are great. They're very confident. These flicks are really lovely, so I don't want you to lose confidence there. I want you to keep it. But I think also you can slow down a little bit with that as well, having your eyelashes or the eyelashes on the animal kind of move a little bit slower. So the mark I'd like to see made over here is something more in the lines of like a, a curve like that. And remember eyelashes kind of stick together a little bit. You, you get like two pores with one eyelash that comes out of it. So having ones that kind of stick together a little bit kind of feels a bit more real. There's always a curve to them. These straight lines are very kind of unnatural. So as soon as you see that in a drawing like that it kind of stands out a little bit to me. What I'd also challenge you with in this is I see that you've used um, either like Tipex or some other medium to get your white sections here. I find there's a slightly smoother outcome when you really just practice keeping your page clean or experiment with erasing. When you start to try and push the boundaries of erasing, you realize that what becomes important is how you put the graphite onto the paper. So in order to facilitate really good erasing, you need to get a familiarity with when you apply the graphite in a certain way, it becomes harder to erase when you apply it with soft, with cotton or whatever, it might be easier to erase. And so you know areas where you might want to erase and you almost think ahead a little bit and go, okay, I want to apply graphite in this way because I'm going to want to pull back out in those areas. So I like that you're paying attention to the highlights in the eye. That's really fantastic because that's where you're going to get that sense of life, that moisture on the eye and it really, that reflection is always a, a really nice visual trick to make drawings look hyper realistic. But in this case, because it was applied with a different medium, you kind of lose that effect a little bit. I really like the effect that you had here. The shading in this section is actually really nice. It, is, it isn't blended in, but I think that adds to it. You saw that the marks you're making looked really good and you left it that way. There's often a temptation to just blend everything. I have that all the time and I think you dodged a bullet by doing that. So when you see that the marks you've made look really nice, leave them as they are and try and see if you can mimic those marks with other parts of the drawing so it all kind of feels homogenous. Where I would like to see blending is more in the iris here. So these lines here are very harsh and I think I prefer to kind of, you know, either crosshatch that or see them blended in a little bit. Okay, let's take a look at your other work. So drawing number two, we're already looking a lot better here. The first thing that stands out to me is the paper that you're using. Your graphite got stuck in these slots in your paper and that's really distracting. So I'd encourage you to try and work with the best quality paper that you're comfortable with. If you're taking on the journey of getting better at drawing, your old works really become precious to you. I know you might not be attached to them as you're starting out, you might think that they're not great or a good representation of what you might want to be doing, but they really become precious. And to have them on just decent quality paper that will not age badly is you're just doing yourself a favor in the future. So really try to pick up some good quality paper. There's a whole lot of psychological stuff that goes into investing into a practice. And so if you can afford it, really try to get the best paper you can. Um, but I think there's a definite improvement. Your, your proportions feel a lot better. The way that you ended the work felt a lot better. It feels like you care more about this artwork, like you're more proud of it, and I can that comes through. I especially like that you aren't using a different medium to get your highlights. Actually, you might be. 
um, but you worked over it a little bit, blended it in. I'm not quite sure, I can't quite tell from the photo. But yeah, your highlight is looking a lot better in this. I would like you to blend the pencil work in the eye, just because that is a very dark spot. It would be good to practice trying to get really dark with blended pencil. That just gives you a uniform tone, and that's always appealing. It makes the, the mark making that you've made elsewhere stand out a lot more when you aren't getting distracted by mark making in an area that should feel flat. What I think you did here is that you applied graphite and then you used an eraser, maybe a Tombow Mono Zero eraser, to pull out hairs. So it is effective in getting the drawing to look like fur, but the work isn't complete. And what I'd suggest is maybe playing around with that embossing technique I spoke about when I gave the drawing fur tutorial. So that's by embossing the page a little bit. Um, you can use a thicker embosser if it's quite a zoomed in thing. So the tools I'm talking about are actually these tools here. Um, so this is a thicker one, this one's a little bit thinner for really fine hairs, obviously for larger hairs. Um, and then another little trick when it comes to drawing hair, this is something that people don't always notice, but hairs are very seldom just straight, like I was saying in your first drawing, but they also catch light on the arc of the hair. So you're going to want to kind of keep that in mind and highlight a section of the hair more and let the hair continue past that point. So if we're using the iPad here, let's just create a new layer again. So the hair will have a highlighted point, and I don't know if you can see that already, it kind of get, just starts giving it the sense of having a bit of shape. So this is just something to bear in mind when it comes to drawing hair, it gives it that 3D kind of volume look. What you're going to want to do here is also find out where your light source is. So I was drawing that at the bottom of the eye. Let's just quickly pretend that we're shaping this eye a little bit. Imagining that the light source is coming from the top, we're just going to darken this a bit. We're going to give it a bit of an eyelid. Now we're just going to do what I'm talking about by giving that highlight to some of these, these hairs over here. So this is, this will be giving it that sense of roundness. You don't have to do this to all the hairs, you can just do it to a couple and it kind of stands out. And you almost in your mind apply that to a lot of the other hairs. So yeah, that's just a little tip with hair. Um, another thing is also that all hairs have a shadow as well. So when you're just using an eraser to make the marks of your hairs, you're losing out on the opportunity to have the shadow of those hairs. So then we create the shadow. It also just kind of brings the whole thing to life a little bit more. I'm also just kind of creating these shadows somewhat sporadically. The thing is, these things are time consuming, so you're going to spend a lot of time on your third eye, hopefully, and just know that you have a couple more tools at your disposal. So what I want you to do is, in conjunction to highlighting your hairs, try and add some of the shadows below those hairs as well. Obviously the light source in this case, I've made it coming from this side, so you're going to want to add the shadow on the opposite side of that light source. But yeah, it's looking really good. I'm really excited to see your improvement on the third one. But yeah, keep experimenting. The whole thing is a learning process, a slow experimentation, and um, don't rush to try and get it to be perfect from the beginning. Let everything be a practice. Um, but thank you very much for submitting. So there we go. I hope that was interesting or useful. If you guys are interested in submitting some of your work for critiques, uh, just head over to my Patreon. I've got three tiers and the last tier, the 90 tier, is where you can submit work and get personalized feedback on your artworks. Hopefully I'll see some of you guys there. It's a really cool community. So there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.